with regard to disease. Um, thereafter, she worked as a social worker in South Africa, briefly at the Cancer Association as a health promoter, and then she worked as a social worker in the UK. Returning from the UK, she settled in the Swatland and worked for the municipality for 12 years as a senior community development, development officer. In that time, she completed her master's in business administration with her thesis focusing on social developing, social development strategies in the municipality context. She then worked for Salga as a social development advisor and thereafter worked as a community development director at an NGO. Since 2020, she has worked at the Trauma Center for Survivors of Violence and Torture. She is also a volunteer um, Art of Living Happiness Program teacher in her free time. So um, yes, she's not all work. She loves walking in nature, music, arts, and family. Marguerite, thank you so much uh, for doing this. And I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you, Nasera, uh, for saying your name correct. Um, yes, I'm very honored to be with all of you who are or probably more knowledgeable on the topic that I'm talking about. Um, but I thought, you know, um, I'll share with you what a little bit of, of what I know and what I found useful, because I'm not an academic, I'm really a practitioner. Um, and we, we do the work there in the community. So um, it might be things that you already know and that you're really familiar with, but bear with me. Um, and I wanted to know if it would be okay if we do, because we're talking about the caregivers, we're talking about how are we affected as caregivers? Because I uh, assume all of you are caregivers in some way. Um, and if it would be fine if I do a short process with everybody, just a little bit of relaxation in your busy day, if that is fine with all of you, because I've been or, as a volunteer for Art of Living and uh, International Association of Human Values, we did online um, breath work uh, from uh, in 2020, 2021 during the pandemic. So I've done a lot of this, but if, you, if you're keen to do a bit of that, uh, people can say, no, please don't, <laughs> but um, let me know. There is, I think there is a chat, chat space, uh, but let me just start with my presentation and then I'll, I'll, I will go from there. Um, me just open it okay so can you all see the presentation for sometimes people can't no this is just part of your social responsive um, lectures and um i've been asked to do to do uh, the topic exploring local and global violence trauma and the effects on mental health especially for carers and that is is us working in the field so I'm going to start off by, this is the index, I'm going, to, I'm, just, I'm going to start off talking a little bit of, about the trauma center and then go over to the main topic. Um, and this is just the index, so let's go. So the trauma center, for those who do not know the trauma center, I'm so happy to hear there's people who've been in the heyday, who've started their careers at trauma center, um, it has been established in 1993 and the organization was formed, really grown from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, offering services to victims of torture. And we are situated at the historic Cowley House. Um, and we, we say our roots are embedded in the courage of those who fought uh, for a nonviolent and a democratic South Africa. And we're still fighting that fight every day um, but the prisoners of family of prisoners were stayed there at, at the trauma center and they were accommodated there and then taken from there 
by an organization that was called the Independence Conference to Robben Island and back. So we 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 always get um, our strength from knowing that the likes of Winnie Mandela and Albertina Sisulu walked here in the halls, and outside, if you go outside on the tenth anniversary of the trauma center, um, Nelson Mandela also did, laid a stone there. His name is on it. So we 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 we, we get reminded that great souls and and strong leaders. Um, led before us, even before the trauma center was start, but we, we believe that they are our foundation. And yes, and over the years, trauma counseling has been offered and also training and violence prevention programs in various forms, work with families, work with children, work with parents, focusing on, um, on advocating for children's rights and rights of, of, of victims of violence. So yes, today we are we are we are really providing that service that for people who can't afford it in the community on grassroots level. We know that it's a it's a big task, but we do what we can um, where we where we are, and we are we are also ambitious to do more. We we want to make it. Uh, we want to see change. Um, the staff at Trauma Center are passionate to see that we can one day say, you know, we contributed to our country to be less violent. So this is our vision, a uh, big vision. Nonviolent society in South Africa respects human rights and is committed to addressing trauma through inclusive healing processes. So I'm not gonna go into all detail because you have, you'll you get it um, as part of your handout after, but you know, we, I'll, but all of these of the mission will also see and the values, you know, the basically we, um, what we stand for, respect, quality care, transformation, um, and accountability. Those are all things that drive, that guides our work. So just look at that. Uh, I think it's, it's quite um, nice to look at the theory of change. So these two main focuses. One is the restoring mental health part, and the other one is prevention of violence. So in terms of restoring mental health, it's a counseling, training of volunteers. We train all the volunteers of police stations in Western Cape and also stakeholder engagements form the base of that. And then below everything is evidence-based research. So we, we want to contribute more to knowledge. We are currently doing a, a, a research project with the University of Rhodes on using prolonged exposure therapy um, for PTSD clients and us as social workers implementing this therapy, which is normally just implemented by clinical psychologists. And um, I'll send you the article when we publish later this year. Um, so you can see what results we had from that. Then prevention of violence, you know, part of that is is, is that we want to see policy changes, um, advocacy structures. We want we look at attitudes. One of the root causes of violence is, is attitudes regarding gender and gender-based violence. Uh, we also look at socioeconomic aspects. We don't do much in terms of socioeconomic initiatives, but we do want to work hand in hand in strengthening also the local economies. So when we, for example, when we do events, we use local caterers and local shops so that we keep money in that community. Um, yes, yeah, so, but mostly we work in terms of advocacy and we also have some violence prevention programs focus on raising awareness and changing attitudes. So that's us. So our services, we do advocacy, counseling services, community-based clinic, which is mostly for adults and a child protection clinic focus on children, training um, in trauma support and also for professionals in trauma bereavement. And then we also have a workplace wellness program. We do work for, for government to support the staff, who, who do need support and also companies. We have a strong partnership with INJ, for example, and One and Only and TBHIV Care 
NGO and we do work for them on a monthly basis and those money goes back into our pockets to drive our work in the community, strengthen that. And then we're very passionate also about violence prevention. You can see here in this corner and in that corner, you can see the work we do in the, with, with theater, educational theater. The, this picture is, 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 is a picture of the audience, very engaged and full hall, full of people who, interest, who were interested in the work that we did to raise awareness on gender-based violence. So yes, also we do a lot of group therapeutic work. We sit sometimes outside in our garden. We work in the community. We do workshops with community leaders to unpack the issues around um, violence in our community. Where does it come from? Here yeah, you can see they're drawing the tree of the roots, where it comes from, and what is the consequences of, of, of our social issues. And we do trainings as well, as you can see there in the corner up there. So this is our output. Um, if you look at last financial year, we, we've, we've uh, reached 1,288 adults for counseling, group and individual, and 1,242 children were counseled, mostly in schools. So we, we can reach more children because our captive audience is really easy to access them. But yes, and, but we were, we're out there, we are accessible. We don't sit only in Woodstock. Um, anymore. We also sit in Delft. We Four out of the five days of the week, we are in communities of Delft. Bishop Leivers, Bontiabel, Cryfontein, Langan, Yanga, Belhar, um, and we, we are there that people can, can get access to our services easily without spending money. So we also reached the, in the, the last year we reached uh, we did we, we also have about 73 clients per month for the work wellness we reached 1041 through the gbv prevention educational theater and we use media where we reach many people obviously there's impact but we make sure that we our word goes out there on what is your rights um, so we also train volunteers. And then we are also a member of the South African Coalition of Transition and Justice. And we formed a vehicle um, and we're busy preparing a process to get reparations paid out to victims of, of apartheid, uh, as, as was recommended, recommended in the TRC. The TRC is unfinished business. It's also our business. We, we grew from the TRC, but Regrettably, 30 years later, more than 30 years later, those um, the, the work has not been completed. Okay, so yeah, just some feedback from clients or the impact of our work. Um, the one you can read here for yourself, just a variety of our programs. Um, here is from a client from a victim empowerment program that says, after the counseling, I can wear the clothes again that I wore on the day I was raped. I can now go on with my life. Often our clients from the trauma are stuck and they can't move on. And, you know, we help to, to people to work through that tra traumatic stress that they experience from the trauma they, that they have been unfortunately had to go through. I have had counselling before, but this was the first time in my home language. I feel like I can express myself. So we have counsellors who can understand and speak Afrikaans and Kosa. The poorest of the poor in our communities um, are not always proficient in English and even more isolated and excluded um, So and marginalised. So we, we are inclusive in that way. Um, you know, a member of our our uh, audience member of our drama production said, we used to think that it, it is right to discipline our woman. Now I realize it is a crime. So through our programs, we, we break the, the, the thought patterns, attitudes um, that leads to continuing of the cycle of violence. Yeah, in our workplace program, somebody said to be in work for every shift make me feel good. I don't want to leave early. I'm also coming in earlier in the morning at work, my energy is coming back. So we do that kind of work. Um, yes, uh, 
it's something I thought, because I heard that there's a quite interest in men's work as well. So we do a lot of therapeutic work or educational workshops in communities where we also include men. And we find that the men are so grateful for the opportunity to also to be heard. Um, we felt able to express ourselves and share our experiences. We felt feel unheard. And it's always about women, but trauma centered created a safe space for us where we can talk about the abuse we experience. And we need more work groups and workshops because it's not, not even a quarter of men from our area attended today. So there's a need for more of those work. Yeah, and you can read the others on another time. Um, future opportunities, people we are a bit devastated at the trauma center at the moment. Um, I know NGOs, NGOs go through ups and downs, but we heard last year in December the devastating news. And I'm sure you at Health also have heard of the budget cuts. So we are not guaranteed of fun funding for a victim empowerment program from 1st of April. That means it's a 60% of our budget that is um, at risk. So we are fundraising like crazy at the moment. We're looking for people who can support us. If you know anybody who loves Trauma Center and the work we do with deep pockets, if you have an uncle in the furniture business, please send them away. We would gladly um, help them to help us. Um, so yes, we want to not only maintain what we do, we want to scale up restoring mental health and training of trauma support volunteers on a national and even international level. We had people from Congo saying they need that kind of work for, for the trauma they experience in their ongoing, relentless ongoing war. Um, and we need advocating for trauma su support counseling in every ward in South Africa. We need more counseling, especially for children. We know that childhood trauma is one of the determine, determinants of sexual violence perpetration. So we need to work, be there for children. Children need a lot from us. We need to uh, um, expand our violence prevention, our awareness raising programs, like our drama project, which I think is amazing. Um, we would like to do more socioeconomic development through ABCD um, development programs. And also to do more, we want to ex uh, expand the PE program, the prolonged exposure therapy program for PTSD patients that's diagnosed by um, psychiatrists and clinical psychologists and support them on a community level. We have a lot of PTSD in our communities. Yes, and yes, we want to strengthen our financial sustainability through our workplace program. So if you know of any companies who want to do more for their workers and are willing to, to let their, their money go an extra mile if it goes to us, it also helps their workers, it helps us as an NGO, it helps the community, it just goes that extra mile. So the topic I'm talking to you about today is exploring local and global violence and trauma and its effect on mental health, especially for carers. So I'm going to focus a bit on, on the uh, vicarious trauma and just about how, just for us to, we all know what we should do, but we don't always do it. We get caught up in all the work we need to do and in sometimes it's good to, for somebody to remind us again, but we always advise to our clients and as carers we sometimes often neglect ourselves I include myself in that as so you know we know that South Africa has high levels of violence um, globally South Africa has uh, some of the highest crime indexes um, uh, recently this came out that Pretoria was number two Durban number three Joburg number four Cape Town was 18, but it's not really good because it was the numbers are quite, the rankings quite close to each other in any case for the first 20. But uh, so yes, if you look at our crime stats from SAPS in, in 2020, sorry, 2022 to 2023, murders were 27,494. Rape reported, we know that there's, there's always underreporting at least 
one out of only one out of 13 rapes are reported. So yeah, we have high violence in our country. And to understand above, we need to reflect also on the root causes of violence, of our violent society, the impact of intergenerational trauma, our violent history and structural violence that's still pervasive. And we have to, have to find solutions for this. Um, I'm thinking, oh my word, I'm an old social worker now. I started almost the time the trauma center was formed um, in 1995. I started my career. And yeah, I don't see that we're making a difference. And really, we can do better and we need to do more of prevention. Um, when, when will we address the root causes of violence? When will we sit with communities and unpack what is happening in the communities and not just dip in with our solutions? Um, it's really a, a good principle of therapeutic work that you can't, as a thera thera therapist, be prescriptive to your client. And the same with our communities. We, we need buy-in, we need our communities to lead their, their, their healing processes, uh, to be part of it. Um, and it's not happening. Um, everybody has a clever idea, a mandate, a political mandate, and it's downloaded on these poor communities that just takes whatever comes the way, because they have so little in any case. Um, yeah, this is just to look at the crime stats. And yeah, it looks like there's a little bit of improvement. You can see the dip here. When we had less alcohol in our communities um, of, of murders and assault. Um, but it's again, our yeah, murders is already higher than it was 10 years ago. Um, the rape, they say, goes down. I don't know. I think people report less. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's not always a welcoming space for to report right. Just hold a moment. I just want to get my phone to check the time. Okay, here we go. Yes, yeah, so that is our life, right? And um, one of my social auxiliary workers, just the practicality of it. Last Monday, she called in, said she's late for work. The taxi driver that was supposed to take them were killed in front of them and his son was there and when she came into the office uh, to sit with her and just to go through a process with her so that she could just regulate and continue with her work she could have actually just gone home but you know I gave her the option but after I worked with her she felt okay to continue the day. Um, yeah it's it's we normalize violence yeah, here is the contact crimes against women and children. Can have a look at that. It was also, <laughs> unfortunately, so high. Okay, you can see it's increasing there. The children reduced for assault and murder. We're always happy for that. Anything that it reduces, but we really need to see significant change in these numbers. So globally, we also affected in Africa, the current um, violence and um, conflicts in or in the above countries there, Democratic Republic of Congo, Cameroon, Ethiopia, Mozambique, Mali, Burkina Faso, and South Sudan. We are affected by all these refugees coming to South Africa. They are re-traumatized here. We've worked with with our clients who come come from Congo with PTSD, and it's just very hard to work with people who experience violence continuously in in the in this country where they 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 move to, and yeah, it's hard to hear that. Um, globally, we are so connected with what's happening, especially now in Israel Palestine. Uh, our communities, we, you know, I even thought today when I was driving along the road and I saw the Palestine flag and I just felt that jolt, you know, that pain in my chest, thinking that, oh, are we still there? And it's just continuing, it's worse. And that impacts, impacts also on us who also hear more trauma about trauma every day. And also we see a lot of images through social media um, that impacts 
how does it, this affect me? Um, do we sometimes stop and just ask, is how does it affect me and my colleagues? Um, now we know the definition of trauma is actual threatened death, serious injury, sexual violation, direct experience, witnessing in person, the traumatic events as occurs to others, learning that traumatic events occur to a close family member or death, violent or accidental, and experiencing repeated and extreme exposure to aversive details of traumatic events. That's now us. Our practitioners in the field of psychology, social work, and even medical field, we experience this to a great extent. Um, so yeah, we 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 also we are also challenged in our spaces where we work to be trauma informed, to be aware of how the trauma we experience through our work also impacts us um, in the workplace. And sometimes our workplaces are not as trauma informed. I, I get that also from staff that I'm not trauma informed. So it's a constant learning because we need to reach our targets, people. We need to push for those numbers, those APPs. I know you in government are, are, are chased by APPs and we by funding targets. And in the meantime, yes, we are also human, only human. And we need to process what we hear every day from our clients. And it has an impact. We know that it impacts our, you all know it impacts our nervous system, our ability to function. And how does it play out in practice in, in each one of your lives? Um, how do we assist um, our caregivers, our clients, we, we advise our clients, but how do we assist, how, assist our caregivers, our carers to regulate, self-regulate our emotions? Is there space for that in the workplace or is that, you know, just have to be tough and pull, push through? So yeah, we know that's just to explain. Um, yeah, I, I, I really like this. Um, I came to on this website with this vicarious trauma toolkit model, and they talk about work-related trauma exposure that links to vicarious trauma and how it changed our worldview. And then also the spectrum of responses, which I thought was quite enlightening and interesting because you get the negative, the vicarious trauma, and the other term people use is secondary trauma, traumatic stress, and then also compassion fatigue. There are online questionnaires we can also do in workplace to determine where we're at in terms of, of compassion fatigue and our vicarious traumatic traumatization. And then neutral, if you can manage that impact effectively but then also in a way if you see your clients resilience it can also lead to vicarious resilience and just the strength of clients to move through whatever they've gone through to get also get energy from that and 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 to see to get the transformation in your client the, if you if there's some impact you know, it's very hard just to listen to people's um, traumatic stories. I, um, when I've, I've done this, this process with PE, when somebody comes in and they can't even leave their room and they can't sleep any of the nights in the week and then leave at the end of 10 sessions, you see impact. You see somebody saying, wow, I can now get up. Only in the morning, I was sleeping all night. I feel fine. I can get on a bus and go to another area that I never could done before. And I couldn't imagine myself doing it. It brings some sort of a satisfaction. Um, so how do we work? Are we giving people sp ourselves space to do proper therapeutic work? Or, or are we just batting away numbers? That, that's how our workplace sometimes leave us to become more traumatized and tired and fatigued. Yeah, so that's I just this is just explaining the terms. Um, com 
passion, satisfaction reflects a sense of meaning that is gained from working in fields of victim service and first responders. Such positive outcomes can motivate and in return protect against the negative effects of trauma exposure. Yeah, we, that's where we have to get, right? Um, yeah, and then it's, it's, it's sometimes how we look at our, the, the people we work with and how can we also get inspiration from our clients and, and draw strength from, from their journeys. <clears throat> so are you experiencing burnout and vicarious trauma? Um, the feeling of helpless and ho feeling helpless and hopeless. It's really hard to get for me to get out of bed in the morning. A sense of one can never do enough. There is in no way I can get all the work done that I should. Hypervigilance. I must keep my guard up at all times to keep myself and those around me safe. But you know, sometimes those guardedness can make us also very defensive and can impact on our relationships at work. Um, yeah, dimin d diminished creativity. I can't seem to come up with a single possible solution. Inability to embrace complexity. There is good and bad, right and wrong, and you can't see the gray areas. You can't see it. Minimizing this person is making a bigger deal of her experience than it really is. You know, you get really like, oh, not another domestic violence case. Oh, I can't deal. Um, yeah, then you must maybe think, you know, maybe you need to take a break and maybe you need to take that mid-year mid, mid -year break. Time away, do a course, meditation course or something that can help you to just get out of that kind of a downward spiral. So there's so many of all of this. I don't really want to read a presentation, so I, I, I think it's, it's, it's something you can read yourself. You know all of this. But for me, it's what I just wanted to bring today is um, just to let us reflect again. Yeah, where are we? Are we just in this, like pushing ahead and not reflecting on ourselves and our, on our own, and our, ourselves and our colleagues? Are we giving, are we compassionate to each other? Do we have any, any compassion left for ourselves and others around us in, in the workplace? Yeah, so go, coming to mindfulness, um, it's, it's now the in, it's maybe it's already old again. <laughs> uh, the mental states of achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment while calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and bodily sensations. Yes, do we have time for that? And do we make time just to go within, just to be with ourselves for a bit? Um, that is that is uh, my question to you and to myself. We can we must always um, just check in. How am I responding? Am I actually triggered by what's happening in my workplace because I'm not taking care of myself? Because yes, workplace must give space, but we all have to also work on ourselves all the time. It's we are we are the ones we've been waiting for, as the cliche says. <laughs> so just, um, yeah, this we do with all our, um, all the people on our courses. This is just trauma centers processes to, to work with our volunteers and the social professionals we train. Looking at the, sometimes just my mom always used to say that you drink your, vitamins, did you get drink water, did you rest, the basics on the physical level, but also on psychological level, emotional self-care, spiritual, we are all very spiritual in, in South Africa, we are all have our different ways of belief and our belief systems, and are we making time to practice our beautiful um, spiritual practices that we grew up with or do we take it for granted and cast it aside or maybe we need to find new ones maybe those ones don't work for us but there's so much out there that you can do and even just being in nature just stacking time to look at the sunset and not at your tiktok screen um, I find myself sometimes just getting to more pulled into social media as a way of coping but 
we have so many negative coping mechanisms that in the end makes it worse. I love this one, just a decompression ritual. When you're done with work, just to have something that breaks your work life from your home life, that you don't bring what you had in work into your home home space. And sometimes and even just at work before you leave, stay a little bit longer and just do a bit of be spend a bit of quiet time in your office just to decompress or go for a walk. So many things to do. Take time to chat to co-workers. No, not all the time. People must have become like sometimes some government spaces where I worked, it was relentless. But you know, having a balance is always good. We don't always find the balance, do we? It's either it's all work or then sometimes we just break down and just can't do anything. Um, so who cares for the caregiver? Um, also to reflect on the social support in your life. You know, um, we, we as social workers, we like to, to use the eco, eco chart where you look at who is supporting the client, in who's, what are the support networks and what's the nature and the quality of those support networks. So we support a lot of people in our work life and outside of work, children, or, uh, parents, when you're at my age, it's sandwich, children and parents. Um, but who supports you? And um, do we nurture those friendships and relationships that's supportive to us? Um, and it doesn't have to be a partner. It's the partners are not always the best support even. Sometimes we have to look at different people to support you in different ways. And your friends and family that we sometimes just neglect. Do we make time to, to connect and spend some quality time? Not only WhatsApps, just face-to-face. -face. Go to some art um, performance together um, something that would bring something new into your life but do it with somebody that you care about and to can to, to nurture those connections we also disconnected don't we you know how can we connect better with people around us so I want to um, if everybody's fine with it just going to get out of this share. Um, just want to stop the share. Okay, I want to, I don't know, stop share, yeah. Yeah, hi, <laughs> I'm back. <clears throat> so um, I want to do a short exercise with you, just a bit of a, a stress relief exercise. So what I do, um, what 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 we what I do is just a, a little bit of chair stretching, but it will be very basic, not a lot of that. And then just the full breath, uh, three of them. Then uh, I'm gonna do five of them, five five of each, five ocean breaths. So ocean breath just to oh okay, and then a mindfulness fullness exercise. So it's it just to give you exactly what it is, is I'm going to say, become aware of your environment, your body, your thoughts, your feelings, just to that part of yourself that's joyful and peaceful, and then back. So as simple as that. Yeah, um, and it's wonderful. But yeah, in, um, I would suggest you just tell people around you, you're going to be quiet for a moment. And um, let's experience something. This is uh, it's going to be 10 minutes. I think this uh, is anybody a question at this point? I think we will have questions at the end. I'm going to do the exercise and then we can have questions. Okay. So this won't be longer, even 10 minutes. So just to start off with, just take the shoulders a bit up to the ears and down just for a moment with so much of work. Our work is on computers, computers just up and back. Just a bit of shoulder exercise. It's a new message. Okay. Shoulders up and back and the other way, back and up. And start using your breath. Breathe in, up, breathe out, going forward, in, and the shoulders go back and up and out, 
breathing when you go forward. So there you go. And the neck, the neck is the other one that takes a lot of strain of us. So I'm going to say breathe in, looking up to the ceiling. Breathe out, looking forward. And you can close your eyes. You can just follow my instructions. Breathe in and out, looking forward. Breathe in, looking forward. Breathe out, turn to the chest. Breathe in, looking forward. Breathe out, drop the chin to the chest. Breathing out. In, looking forward. And just drop your right ear to the right shoulder. In, looking forward. Drop the ear to the left. Breathe in and out. So this is very experiential. So other side, be free to participate. You can close your screen. I don't, nobody has to see you doing this, <laughs> but it's nice experiential um, exercise. We're going to do a bit of belly breath, stomach, put your hand on your stomach. So just close your eyes. And just before you breathe in, just be aware of your breath. Breathe into the stomach. And out. Another breath in. Stomach blow up like a balloon. And out. Breathe in, stomach blow up. Navel out. Breathe out, navel in to the, towards the spine. Breathe in, stomach out, navel push out like a big balloon. Breathe out. Hand on the chest. So you've done your hand on the stomach, hand on the chest. Breathe into the stomach, into the chest. And breathe out into the stomach and into the chest. Breathe out. And another breath in. Into the chest. And let go. Hands in the chest before you open your eyes. Just be aware of what's happening in the body, in the mind at the moment. And you can open your eyes. We're going to do some ocean breath. So the way to explain it is when you have a cold drink and you put it down and you go. So breathe in and out. Breathe in, out. Another breath in and out. But now close the mouth. Still the same sound, just for the mouth closed. Breathe in the same way. Slight constriction of the throat, breathe out. Constriction of the throat ever so slightly. No, nothing heavy, breathe in. Long breath in, breathe out. And relax the hands on the lap. Breathe in. And out. Sounds a bit like Darth Vader for the Star Wars people. Breathe in. Breathe out. More like the ocean. Breathe in. Deep breath in, breathe out, and let go. Last breath in, and out. So for a few minutes, just keep your eyes closed. Just listen to the sounds in the environment, the office. 
traffic outside, maybe a fridge humming. And be in harmony with your environment. Become aware of your body. Attention to your feet. Knees. Hips. To your stomach. Chest. Right shoulder, left shoulder, neck and throat. Become aware of your throat being a empty bundle of pipes, empty pipes. Just be aware. Your face, your show, your brows, cheekbones, jaw. Relax the eyes, tongue, ears, top of the head to tip of the toes. Take a breath in. Breathe out. Become aware of your thoughts. Good thoughts, bad thoughts, let them come. Do not resist any thoughts. We are in harmony with our thoughts. Become aware of your feelings. You are peace, you have joy in you, you have peace in you. Just relax. You are peace, you are joy. Breathe in and out, keep on breathing. And again, become aware of your feelings. Your thoughts. Become aware of your body. Become aware of sensations in the body. Become aware of the room you're sitting in, the chair, your weight on the chair, the sounds in the environment. And when you're ready, in your own time, you may open your eyes very quick. <laughs> How was that? Anybody? Up thumbs, up or down, or was it? <laughs> Good. It's very simple, just a bit of time together and the collective doing things like this collectively also helps a lot. It's really, even me, I feel better. <laughs> okay. Yes, that's why I teach this because it's, it rubs, it gives me, maybe that's that vicarious resilience that's rubbing off on me. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Imtiaz. Um, for the, no more thumbs. Great. Thanks.
Is there, are there any questions, any comments? Because obviously I'm learning, I'm here with the relaxation, relaxing, somebody said, um, uh, yeah, it's, I'm here with a very learned group of people. I feel actually quite intimidated, but then I thought, let me do something that I'm, I'm, I know well, how to do well. I've been, I've been uh, teaching this since the mid 2000s in communities. And now I'm an uh, of living teacher since 2018. But yeah, uh, but I, it it links very well with my it's my worlds come together. It links very well with my work work at the trauma center. Thank you for Davilene, much needed. Twasim say thank you, Marguerite. That was very restorative. Uh, my pleasure. Any 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 comments? Any questions about the trauma center, or just some input from you on? Restorative practices. Also, hope I can see all the everybody. <clears throat> see if I miss a, a finger, a, a thumbs up or a hand up. Um, yeah, this this was now. Yes, Nazira. Yes. 